I've been an editor for five years, and today I wanna to show you five clean ways how to transition clips inside of Premiere Pro. These are five of some of my most used transitions that I just keep coming back to because they all just work so well in the vast majority of content. I don't wanna waste your time. Let's just go ahead and hop into Premiere Pro and learn five clean and unique ways how to transition clips. So for this very first transition, I think this works really well when you're filming kind of aesthetic or cinematic filmmaking kind of content. It can kind of work in anything. I just think this is when it looks the best. So to do this, we just want to right click, hit new item and do a color mat, then hit okay. And then you're going to want to make it white. Hit okay again, and then drag and drop this on in between your two clips. Just go ahead and trim off the rest. You don't want it to be super, super long. And what we're trying to do is create a flash kind of effect. So to do this, you just want to go to the middle of your two clips, come down to opacity, hit the stopwatch to make a keyframe, and then just move to the very beginning of this clip and turn it down to zero, and then move to the very end of it and then create another keyframe and turn it down to zero again. We can take a look and just kind of see what we're working with pretty good it's nothing too crazy yet i kind of want to just play around with some of the blend modes because some of them might look better than others see what overlay looks like i actually really like that that might be the best option but let's see what else we can do soft light isn't bad honestly going through a lot of these i think overlay is probably our best option you can mess around with the blend modes you can mess around with the opacity as well you can change this to like normal but make it like a 70 percent instead of 100 just see what looks best i think for this clip specifically i think this is my favorite look i love this look and i want to include it for you guys because i just love the vibe that it gives off in your footage the next thing that i want to do isn't really a transition that you can do within premiere itself but i want to do a film burn there's a lot of different ways that you can get these film burns you can either do the hard way and make one yourself I've made them myself and they are so time consuming. So I wouldn't really recommend that. You can maybe find some off of just YouTube videos, just looking up film burn overlays. Some creators as well do offer these. Like I personally offer a kit, a film burn kit that you can find linked below, but you don't necessarily need to buy mine to do this effect or anything like that. But I would definitely just recommend finding some kind of video file of a film burn because out of literally anything, I think I use film burns the most because I just love the way they look. And so I want to make sure that this made it into this video because of just how goaded I think they are. For me, I'm just going to pull up the kit that I built just because it's all my favorite film burns. And so I'm going to do vertical film burns. And then I just, I have like 15 different presets in here. I think six is honestly my favorite. So again, you just want it to be right in the middle of your two clips. And then you want to do the blend mode, change it to screen. And then a nice little cherry on top to really sell the transition is if you do a sound effect. And I do have one in this pack as well as like a camera shutter kind of sound effect. So I'll just drag and drop this in. And again, you just want to position this right in the middle of your two clips. And now let's check out how it looks. Obviously these clips, I don't have sound on them, but you still get the idea of the actual film burn itself. These are super sick. You can also mess around blend modes on this if you want. You can try like difference or something on it. That's honestly not half bad. You can just kind of have fun with it to see what you like. You can definitely get super creative with it. For this next transition, I want to show you probably one that I use second most, and that is a slide transition. So to do this, you want to actually get your transform tool, drag and drop one of these on. And then first thing I always do in transform is turn the shutter angle all the way up. And then to start this clip, you just want to move it off of the frame, hit a keyframe at the very beginning, just move it in a little bit and set it back to where it was. So let's just see how fast it is right now. Okay. I think that should be slowed down a little bit. And if we highlight both keyframes, right click due to temporal interpolation and hit Bezier, this is gonna allow us to hit this drop down, and then we can adjust the speed ramping of this transition. So I do have a whole video breaking down how to create smooth keyframes. I'm gonna leave that video here at the top if you wanna check it out, because it's a little complex to explain the whole thing really fast. But just know for a transition like this, you just wanna bring the second anchor point all the way down and probably just as far left as you can go. And maybe just move this one up a little bit. So this is gonna create a smooth keyframe. So it's gonna start fast and come to a slow stop instead of just being abrupt, if that makes any sense. So let's just see what this looks like now. Not bad, but to actually sell the look of this transition, you just wanna put the clip on top so that way you don't get that black screen in the background. So now this is what the slide effect looks like. So I actually use these a lot. And then what I also do is I add like a whoosh kind of sound effect. Uh, I think the one I have, I believe I got it off of Epidemic Sound and they have a ton of different sound effects on that website. So check it out if you want to use it in your content. But the slide effect, I use it like 
a lot, can't lie. All right, so for the fourth transition, I wanna use an external plugin called Keeper. And what this does, it allows you to mask out the subject of your video. This plugin is not free, unfortunately. It's not my plugin or anything. I just bought it for myself to create in my content. I'll leave it linked below. I have a whole video breaking down how to use it as well as a free alternative if you need it. But this is a really cool effect that you can get really creative with. I'm just gonna go look up Keeper drag and drop it on. And then I wanna change the detection to my subject. And now you can see my MacBook is completely keyed out. So the real sauce in this is gonna be, if I hold Alt and drag this up, that's gonna duplicate my layer and then I can delete it off of the base clip. Let me just restructure the layers and then we can move this forward. Overlaid on top of my clip is my MacBook. So you can kind of see what this looks like. I feel like you see this kind of thing a lot in like music videos, but it can look extra cool if you add effects on top of that. So you could add a slide in like we just went over. I'm just gonna use a preset that I have really quick. It'll be like the same exact effect. So I can just do a slide in up and this is gonna create motion and just make it more of a seamless transition. So let's see what that did. See, like that is super sick. I love that. I'm kind of experimenting around with this transition a little bit more now, but I think they're just super cool. You can definitely have a lot of fun with this kind of transition, just really get creative with it. And then for this final transition, I want to create a zoom in and out. So in the first clip, it's going to zoom in, and then when I transition, it's going to zoom out. So again, to do this, you want to pull up your transform and then just drag and drop this in onto both clips. So on our first clip, again, we're in the transform tool, turn your shutter angle all the way up, and then you want to scale it kind of towards the end is when you want to start it. Hit a keyframe there. And then go to the very end of your clip and then I'll try like 150. Honestly, I think I should go up a little bit more. So then we're gonna highlight both of these, right click, do Bezier. And then again, we wanna create this motion. So we drag this one kind of towards the bottom, move it out actually to adjust that. I need to move this one in, bring this one up a little bit and move it back. So that creates like an exponential kind of speed ramp where it just starts off slow and gets faster and faster. So I'm pretty happy with that for the first clip. And then for the second clip, you're gonna do the complete inverse of that. So we have the transform on it. You're gonna turn the shutter angle all the way up. And for this clip, you're gonna to wanna to start it at that same scale. So in this case, it's 180. Hit a keyframe and then just move it back a little bit and then send it back to 100. How they both right click Bezier. Then you're gonna create that same exponential speed ramp. So we're just gonna line it up here in the middle on that second anchor point, and then just move this one down a little bit. I don't know if these line up perfectly yet in terms of speed, but let's just see what it looks like. Honestly, that works super well. And I'd say that's a transition done. And so that is five unique, clean transitions that you can do inside of Premiere Pro. Again, these are like my five most used transitions that I do. Cause I just like to keep things simple. And when you're editing, not having to think as much is gonna help you so much more in the long run because it's something that is so mentally intensive. So the more like a system you can build in your edit that you can just replicate over and over without thinking, it's just gonna save you so much headache and not hate editing. And so these are the five that I just tend to do the most. Hopefully that makes some sense. But anyways, I just want to let you know that I do offer editing assets on my website, justinlizandme.com, where you can shop a whole bunch of these time-saving presets so that you're not manually having to create these effects. You can just drag and drop them on into your footage. But if you want to see a video where I teach you how to create animated captions in Premiere Pro, I'm going to leave this video up for you guys so you can go check it out. Hope to see you in there.